Hello everyone, I'm Anshul Sharma, your educator. In this video, we are going to discuss about Nayantara Singh. Let us know something about her. Before that, these are few important books and memoirs that she has written. Mistaken Identity, Day of Reckoning, There is Prison and Chocolate Cake and There is Rich Like Us. Let us jump into the video and discuss about Nayantara Sehgal. Nayantara Sehgal, born on 10th May 1927, is an Indian writer who writes in English. She is the member of the Nehru Gandhi family and the second of the three daughters born to Jhwalal Nehru's sister Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. She was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1986 for her English novel, Rich Like Us, that was written, that was published in 1985. So, Rich Like Us came out in 1985 and it received the Sahitya Academy Award in 1986. Earlier, her earlier book that is called as The Plans for Departure won the Commonwealth Writers Prize as well. So, let us see. So, Nayantara Segal, she was born on which date? She was born on 10th May 1927. She belongs to the Nehru family. Nehru, uh, Jwal Nehru's sister, that is the Vijay Lakshmi Pandit daughter is called as Nayantara Segal. And she was awarded Sahitya Academy Award for her book, Rich Like Us, that was published in 1985. And Sahitya Academy Award was given to this book in 1986, right? Another book that is The Plans for Departure received the Commonwealth Literature Prize as well. She served as an advisor to the Sahitya Academy's board for the English from these dates, that is 1972 to 1975. She was in the committee and the advisor to the Sahitya Academy board. Sehgal's first novel, that is A Time to be Happy, has the reference to Congress activities. Now, what you will observe, you will ob observe that mostly all the memoirs or all the novels that are written by her are, are, you know, revolving around the theme of the political life at that time. So, as she is belonging in that family, she will write about things that she will directly encounter as well. So, you will see that mostly she is discussing about female protagonists. Yes, because being a female writer, she is entering into the domain and writing about the country. And we all know that when we talk about border, when we talk about nations, when we talk about writing about nation or about changes, it is basically the domain of a male writer. It has been a domain of the male writer. But Nantara Sehgal will break these boundaries and she will become one of the few females leading women writer who will take upon herself the responsibility to talk about this changing world and also the problems that we encountered during that time. Rich Like Us, we can take this example, this novel Rich Like Us talks in greater detail about the problems that we saw during the time of emergency. Right, so Indira Gandhi was the PM at that time and we saw that millions of people, whether rich or poor, were suffering because of the uh, uh, because of this emergency period that we are seeing. She talks about different tycoons who because of power will take wrong decisions. So these are the themes that she will discuss. She will talk about the Nasbandi that was going on at that time. She will talk about the evacuation of the slums. So, all of these things are the major things, are the major themes that she discusses in her novels. So, her first novel, that is A Time to be Happy, has the reference of Congress activities and the events around the 1942 period. The novel portrays the search for identity of a westernized Indian youth and youth and against the backdrop of the India's struggle for liberation. So basically, India is struggling for liberation. And this novel will tell us about the events during the 1940s that were going on during that time. It is portraying the identity of India's westernized youth and how do they struggle to become modernized and are bound to their own nations. Then we have This Time for Morning. It's a purely political novel 
which deals with what happens in the corridors of power how some rich are becoming more and more richer and the poor remains the poor only so there is this divide between them in the drawing rooms of the politically very important people or the lobbies of the parliament what all things happen during that time some of the characters in the novel are so beautifully and symbolically portrayed that right now also in this modernized contemporary world we relate those characters some characters of the novel are so beautifully and symbolically portrayed that they are equated with the contemporary political personalities as well much of the action takes place in delhi there are there are you will find different novels also that have major actions being happening in delhi maybe punjab so in closed counters only she will encounter uh, she will depict the problems that we see in the parliamentary regions and the particular context is the decline and the fall of the pillars of government here called as here the person is kalyan sinha so here this political influential person kalyan will fall towards his doom because of the corruption and because of the different activities that they all were doing at that time then the storm in chandigarh deals with the problem of the political tension and violence originating from the from the beginning that was there in chandigarh the common capital of these two states punjab and haryana the novel depicts the violence and the chaos and the uneasiness of the political situation that was that was happening in the late 60s in the partition of punjab into two newly formed states so it's also a very politically driven novel it is talking about the political situation that we see in the late 60s of the partition of punjab that in which we see that there were two newly formed states punjab speaking punjab and the hindi speaking haryana with chandigarh as the common capital so this is the broader theme this political situation and the tussle between the punjabi speaking punjab and what the another part was what it was the hindi speaking haryana right this is another theme that is discussed then the day in shadow deals with the struggle of a youth a very beautiful daring indian woman who is trapped under the burden of this brutal divorce settlement and the agony and the unhappiness which she goes in her life the she experiences in the hands of this brutal male dominated world and the society of india so here we see that this woman is in a very unhappy marriage she wants to just go out of it but this novel this no this novel depicts how there is a burden for life and this brutal divorce settlement and only agony in the life of this woman who cannot go out of this marital structure because of the indian structure that we have a situation in new delhi depicts the aftermath of the great popular prime minister shivraj who dominated the political and the national scene and national scene of a full decade so this will also talk about a prime minister called as shivraj so you will see that all the novels are very much political novels and she writes about the inner life of these political corridors which were not very clear to other people she tried to depict this life so all her novels are very much sarcastic they are very much talking about the political structure political corridors that we people we common uh, common people were not even aware about so these are few works of uh, uh, our very own nayantara segal we have one memoir that is very important that is prison and chocolate cake it's also a pyq so you should know it uh, it came out in 1954 then we have another memoir from fear set free it came out in 1963 while there are other novels like a time to be this time of morning storm in chandigarh the freedom movement in india sunlight surrounds you the day in shadow the voice for freedom indira gandhi's emergency and her style she's talking about it 1978 ki novel hai ye indira gandhi her road to power then plans for departure 
rich like us very important in 1985 it came and it won the prize in 1986 then we have mistaken identity a situation in new delhi lesser breeds the fate of butterflies so these were few novels let us discuss about her memoir that is called as the prison and chocolate cake the prison and chocolate cake the title also is very interesting it talks about the different situations that were going on there she touches about the life of gandhi and nehru in period also the title is based on the incident in the early 1930s when sehgal at the age of 3 witnessed police to arrive when they were police that arrived to take her father to the prison so the prison and the chocolate cake is a very personal title that she gave because her father was taken by the police and she witnessed it that is why while she was consuming her cake she witnessed that police came and took her father away so she named the novel resonating to the incident that happened during that time when she was only 3 years of age at the time the family were having chocolate cake for tea a treat that day was you know that was a treat for that day instead of the usual bread and butter so they were very happy that day usually they used to eat bread and butter but that time they were serving themselves with cake and what happened some very something very awful is associated with it the center for her story is her father the classic scholar who is called as ranjit sita ram pandit and her mother the formal ambassador of the united nations who is called as vijay lakshmi pandit and her uncle jawahar lal nehru india's first prime minister were all sitting and this incident happened the book ends with the assassination of gandhi in 1948 so it's a very um, real life because what's a memoir a memoir is a life writing it will tell about the real life experiences she starts her novel by giving it a very personal touch human touch by this incident the name is received the name of the novel is resonating the incident that happened during that time in 1930s when she was only 3 years of age and she witnessed being only 3 years of age this must have impacted her life and created a traumatic condition right so she associated with it that her father was being taken to the prison she had a political career and she comes from this political family so she is writing about this politics in that was going during that time only right she also ends the book with the assassination of gandhi that happened in 1948 then comes the rich like us so rich like us is a very daring novel from the emergency period that was in 1975 to 77 so it's a very controversial period people were some people support it some people don't support it so she was in this novel trying to criticize and was trying to sarcastically talk about the emergency period she is against the emergency period in this novel a very controversial movement in the indian politics that is the nasbandi movement or you can say the emergency period she is talking about it sehgal's open the disagreement with the emergency regime of indira gandhi actually her first cousin so indira gandhi was her first cousin she will criticize the she will discuss of course the period before the emergency during the emergency and after the emergency and she will say how utmost power just uh, created the havoc in the situation and how um, indira gandhi and uh, her sons were creating problems and this emergency which was a very wrong decision came into being there were forceful uh, vasectomies there was sterilization that were happening there this is all a sarcastic tone that she is going to follow she also touch upon the incidents of evacuation of the slums and how the poor were becoming poor only so this was a gambit this was a basically a domain which males used to write right fine balance is a novel about which uh, about the same period you know uh, resonating the same period only that is uh, they used to uh, fine balance talks about the emergency period only but here we see a female writer talking about it which is very 
shocking it is not a male forte anymore but she is talking about this period this novel is a story about two women characters Her, their name is sonali and rose and she will discuss about the life of sonali and rose sonali and rose but you will see that never during the course of the novel she will leave the politics so she will keep on discussing the politics only so let me read it is a controversial moment in the indian politics and sahgal opens with this disagreement of the emergency regime during the period of indira gandhi and she is partially uh, framed by the fact that sahgal a committed socialist is writing against the capitalist invasion in india so she is writing against the capitalist invasion in india as well another point that opposes sahgal in the emergency regime is the subtitle transformation of the latter into a clear dictatorship so she saw that this time it was not a democracy that was seen in our country but it was a dictatorship that was seen the excess which sehgal intends to denounce so she was against the excess this political tension is translated into a fictional argument constructed around a sense of deep crisis which is the way sehgal depicts the 1970s of our country so in rich like us as i told you there are two women characters two protagonists around which the novel will rotate the first is sonali she is a middle class woman she is someone who is very dedicated she is someone who is very hard working and she depicts the middle class but she is impacted by the westernized culture how she is impacted by the capitalist invasion she is impacted by the problems during the emergency period she loses her job she is not getting what she wants in life she is taken to the backdrop of her career and there we have rose she is coming from this elite family but it and she is married to an elite member only and his he uh, she is married to a business tycoon and his name is ram ram has a lot of qualities that are extremely good so they are rose is also associated with a good person but her life will be destroyed because of the son of this business tycoon ram and ultimately we see both of them coming to decay we have sonali who will lose her job who will go to the backdrop of her job not doing good in her career and these are the problems that she will go through and rose will ultimately die and her dead body will be thrown in the well at the end of the novel so by these taking these two characters she will depict the plight of the women because of course there are women characters they are strong women characters but now the doom will come because of the emergency period also she will clearly talk about the emergency regime and how indira gandhi was taking herself as was making herself look as a dictator and we'll see that how the life of people were destroyed so we see that how uh, we see in this novel that there is the historical period that is very very important it is also a socio political novel also formation of ina is one theme that is discussed in the novel also female experiences are very poignantly shown here the subversion of democracy itself is a theme that sehgal is discussing right so these are what these are the few themes that we see nayantara sehgal discussing so let us see first of all what we have discussed so nayantara sehgal as i told you was born in 1927 she was an indian writer she is writing during uh, about the emergency period about the political structures that were going on and uh, the political tensions that were going on because she is directly associated with the political family the uh, uh, well, she is directly associated with the nehru gandhian family right then her novel rich like us that came out in 1983 will receive the sahitya academy award in 1986 and the plans for departure will get the commonwealth prize commonwealth writers prize also she also served as an advisor in the sahitya academy board of english during these two periods uh, in from 1972 to 1975 then we discussed about a few of her novels then we saw about the list that i had 
these were different the two memoirs and the different novels and you will see how she is trying to critique and playfully sarcastically she is talking about all the political structures that were going on these are the two memoirs that are important prison and chocolate cake ends with the assassination of uh, gandhi she has discussed this in greater detail the memoir talks about the uh, growth the intricacies and the details that were going on at that point of time in the political structure rich like us will talk about the emergency period and sarcastically will talk about what kind of democracy do we live in when we don't have even a slightest ounce of freedom and this novel will talk how indira gandhi was becoming a dictator and this was no more a democracy she will show the life of sonali and rose and how these two female protagonists will go to do at the end right so i hope you like the you like the explanation that i gave to you and these are important things that you should know before you go to your exams about nayantara segal read more about it and i'm pretty sure that if you have any doubt i will clear it you can write it in the comment section i'll surely reply to you thank you so much for listening to this video and going through this with me thank you